Welcome to section 1.4, Complex Numbers. And I'm going to start off this section by recalling um, a problem that we looked at earlier in um, the P chapter. And recall that the square root of negative 25 is not real because there's no number squared that equals negative 25. Okay. There's no way to make it real. And so we're going to talk about today how to work with these numbers that are not real, or these values that are not real. And we have something called the imaginary unit. And the imaginary unit is the, the unit I, and um, I like to go ahead and make it cursive I or like a telesize I. We're going to define I as the square root of negative 1. So if i equals the square of negative 1, if we were to square i, then that would be the square root of negative 1 squared. And the square and the square root would negate each other out, and you end up with the value of negative 1. Okay. So it's important in this chapter, in this section, to remember that i... equals the square root of negative 1 and i squared equals negative 1. I'm going to draw my i's that way. I'm used to doing it that way. Okay. Complex numbers um, are a set of numbers in the form of a plus b i. a is the real part and this part right here is the imaginary part. All um, numbers that we deal with in this class will be a complex number, whether it's real or has an imaginary part with that real part. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at example one. And again, with the imaginary numbers, they're never going to be real. But we're going to look at how to do operations on these imaginary numbers or the complex numbers. And so, um, example one, I'm going to ask you to perform the indicated operation right in the result in standard form, and we're going to add and subtract in this case. Well, pretty much um, intuitive. If you, um, I think a lot of y'all will. So a lot, I would do this with, with the variable x. So let's look at part a. 5 minus 11i, there's a complex number right there. And we're adding it on to 7 plus 4i, there's another complex number there. Remember that when we're adding, uh, when we add polynomials, we didn't really need the parentheses there. So it's the same thing as 5 minus 11i plus 7 plus 4i. And then, just like before, we add the like terms of what we could say. So the 5 and the 7 can be added together and you get 12. And the negative 11i and the 4i give you negative 7i. Okay. This is written in standard form because here's the real part and here's the imaginary part. So this is in A plus BI form. Okay. Look at part B. Here I have negative 5 plus i minus negative 11 minus 6i. So again, we're going to go ahead and look at this. And remember, we talked about the subtraction of polynomial. We have to make sure we distribute that. Minus signs of negative 5 plus i plus 11 plus 6i. So you're subtracting each one of those terms in the second um, complex number, and that changes the sign of each term. So I go ahead and add the um, negative 5 and the 11, so I get 6. And I go ahead and add the i and 6i, I get plus 7i. Okay. Now if you had done the i first and said, well, I'm going to add the i's first, and I get 7i plus 6, that's not standard complex form. You want the A part or the real part first. So I would just do the real part first. So I get 6 plus 7i. Okay. Go ahead and pause the video and do this on your own problem. And I'll go ahead and pause my video and then when um, we replay it, the answer will be up there. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and um, you can check the answer. I get negative 10 plus 7i. Go to example two, let's multiply complex numbers. Here we're going to find the products, and again, it's going to be intuitive, I hope, from what we did before in terms of uh, polynomials. Here are 4i times the quantity 3 minus 5i. I'm going to distribute the 4i. 
So 4i times 3 is 12i. 4i times the negative 5i is minus 20i squared. Okay. And then we have the imaginary unit. There's the imaginary unit on right there. But what we see here is we have i squared here. And if we ever see i squared, remember, i squared equals negative 1. So we can replace that with negative 1. So this now becomes 12i minus 20 times negative 1. And that right here gives me 12i plus 20. And now um, we want to make sure our answer is in standard complex form. Um, so we'll go ahead and write 20 plus 12i. Okay. Go ahead and do part B, and I'm going to FOIL these two um, complex numbers. And they're really just two binomial, two terms times two terms. So first times first, I get negative 14. So first times first gives me negative 14. Outer times outer will give me negative 35i. Inner times inner, that'll give me a positive, because negative times negative positive, 6i. And last times last, this will give me a positive 15i squared. Okay, so now we can go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms, these two together. Give me what, negative 35 plus 6 is negative 29 or minus 29i. And here I have plus 15. I'm going to go ahead and replace this i squared with a negative 1. I have negative 14 minus 29i minus 15. And I'm going to go ahead and combine those two together so I get negative 29 minus 29i. Here's my standard uh, complex form. Okay. okay, so go ahead and pause the video and do this next one on your own. And uh, when you replay the video, again, the answer will be up there for you to look at. Okay, so on the on your own problem, I got 58 minus 11i. And if you need to look through my steps, um, I, I foiled. Uh, combine like terms and or like terms with the i's and then I also um, changed the i square when I saw that um, to a negative one. Okay? Okay. Let's talk about complex conjugates. We talked about conjugates over the p chapter and so uh, conjugates are basically the same term but different signs in the middle. So here I have 2 minus 5 by the complex conjugate would be 2 plus 5 i. Okay. And let's see what happens when we multiply complex conjugates. So let's see, I have 2 minus 5i times 2 plus 5i. So let's go ahead and foil this out. So first times first would be 4. Outer times outer would be plus 10i. Inner times inner would be minus 10i. And last times last, positive times the our negative times the positive is negative. 5 times 5 is 25. I times I is I squared. Okay. What happened to these two middle terms? Positive 10i and minus 10i, or plus 10i, minus 10i is going to give you zero. Those drop out. We end up with 4 minus 25i squared. Well, isn't that the same thing as 4 minus 25 times the negative 1? Remember, this i squared here is negative 1. I'm getting 4 plus 25, which gives me 29. So notice how I multiplied two complex conjugates. I ended up with a real number, no, um, no imaginary unit in that number. I got rid of the i. Okay. Well, that idea we're going to play. Um, it's going to play into our next example, example three. And remember how we did not want radicals in our denominator back in the p chapter. Well, notice how here I have an i in the denominator, and i technically. It's the square root of negative 1, so we really don't want that there. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at this problem. I have 7 plus 4i over 2 minus 5i. So I want to get rid of that i in the denominator because, again, this i right here is the square root of negative 1. We can get rid of that i because remember how I looked at this problem a second ago. And if I multiply 2 minus 5i, by 2 plus 5i, I end up with no more i there. So I can do that. I can go ahead and multiply this denominator by 2 plus 5i. 
But if I do that, I have to multiply the numerator by the same thing, 2 plus 5i, because that's technically 1. Okay? So let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert um, some parentheses, because I'm going to multiply this times this, and this times this. On the top, I have 14. I'm going to do first times first. Outer times, but first times first. Outer times outer will be plus 35i. Inner times inner will be plus 8i. And last times last will be plus 20i squared. Now the denominator, we can we already know the answer to the denominator. We already found out that it was 29. So on the test, you could show these steps up here. Okay. Um, or sometimes I'm times doing this off the side. 2 minus 5i and then 2 plus 5i. Give me 4 outer plus 10i minus 10i minus 25i squared. So 4 minus 25 times negative 1, so 4 plus 25, negative 29. We have 29 down there. So I end up with now um, 14, and I add the 35i and the 8i, I get plus 43i. And I get plus 20 times negative 1, and over 29. And that's the same thing. This right here is the same thing as minus 20. So I have 14 plus 43i minus 20 over 29, which gives me negative 6 plus 43i over 29. And right now, a lot of students will stop at this point, but we want it in the form of a plus bi. We want to distinguish what is the real part and what is the imaginary part right here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and separate this, and we get negative 6 over 29 plus 43 over 29i. You see that right there? I'm going to go ahead and write that a little bit nicer. I. This would be in the standard complex form right there. There's your a, there's your b, <clears throat> there's your i. Because you really want to separate those um, once you um, simplify So on your own, go ahead and divide and express in standard form this next problem. And um, that will be the end of our video, most likely, because I'm running out of time. So go ahead and pause your video, and when you um, restart up again, I will have the answer to this on the board, or on the screen. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and try this on your own. Here's the answer right there. And what I did was I multiplied both the numerator and denominator by the denominator's conjugate, which was 2 minus i. So 2 minus i over 2 minus i. And what I did was I actually showed my work down here and here, just so it just gave me less clutter in my work. Um, I multiplied the denominators, of course my eyes went away, and I ended up with 5. And I have a problem because a lot of times students get kind of tripped up over here. They'll, um, they'll write 4 minus 1 instead of 4 minus a negative 1. Right here, it's a 4 minus a negative 1. And over here I just multiplied the numerator together and got 7 plus 4i. I put it up here. And I split um, this up to give me the a plus bi. And one thing I want to note here, and we didn't see this in this example, but you might see this in your homework or in your assignment, is um, when I split this up right here and here, if these fractions can be reduced, let's say I had um, 20 over 30 plus uh, 3 over 30i, then you would want to definitely reduce that. You would say 2 thirds plus 1 uh, Three and three, one tenth i. So if you can reduce it, um, always reduce uh, those fractions. We didn't have an example like that um, in the examples, so just keep keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video, and we'll go ahead and continue on to page 37 in the uh, next video.